Today's adventure takes us here to Frankfort, Illinois and to Pleasant Hill Cemetery. This is a pioneer cemetery going back to 1828. There are some wonderful graves and monuments here that we're going to explore. But in the spirit of baseball season, because Major League Baseball is starting spring training, we're also going to find the grave of famous Hall of Famer, All-Star, World Series champion, Lou Boudreau. He played shortstop for the Cleveland Indians most of his career, and he is buried in a cemetery, and we're going to try to find his grave today, and I'll tell you his story. So come join me as we explore Pleasant Hill Cemetery. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me again on another adventure. This time we are in Frankfort, Illinois, Pleasant Hill Cemetery. This cemetery, as I said in the intro, goes all the way back to 1928. And there is an older section to the cemetery that I'm approaching now. And we can see this wonderful old archway with the sign above that says Pleasant Hill. And back in the day, you can imagine, this was probably the entrance to the old cemetery, the cemetery much bigger now as it is still active and it's more of a modern cemetery. Sane Meister is the name on this. We have William Sane Meister and Christine Sane Meister here. Old one, you can see the, the lamb there. Eric, it looks like, perhaps on there. I could be wrong. Beautiful stone hair. It says mother and father. We have the handshake there in the middle. Ruth is the name, wife of Jacob, Jacob Leffler. And here's Jacob, born in 1795, date, died 1867. This one here, it looks like born 1812, died 1880 something. That is a fantastic monument to the Leffler family. Another one with the finger pointing up. Now, I did make the mistake of leaving my flashlight in the car, which I should never do, but I do it way too often. And I'm not going to walk to the cars about a half mile away, maybe a little less. Barker, 1907 there. Let's check out this, the, one of the Woodsmen of America monuments here. Dottie is the name on this. Ambrose Dottie died, looks like May 5th, 1882, 80 years old. Elizabeth died 1887. Lived a long life. But Linda, I assume their child, was only 28 when she died in 1873. Ambrose Jr. died at 26 in 1861. And then we have uh, Wealthy is the name there. Died in January. It looks like Wealthy was just a child. And Abner died 1846 at the age of 13. So you think about this, Ambrose, 
and Eliza lost four children in their lifetime. But what a beautiful monument. It's got to be 10 feet tall, the tree trunk, the inscription. The Woodsman of America type tree trunk there. Beautiful, beautiful monument. And here we have Melinda Dottie. And let's see what's on this side. It says father and mother at rest. That's that's wonderful. Let's see what we have over here. It says it just says Raymond infant son on that. And then we have a couple over here with a handshake. Hard to read that one. Looks like 1898. We have another handshake, and this one is completely void of inscription as the weather has taken a toll on that one. Rabe is the name on this one. Very decorative. We see what it looks like maybe the gate to heaven and an angel rising through that. Eli, son of H&L Rabe, or Rab, 1867 to 1900. And here's Rab here in German. Frankfurt is definitely known for its German ancestors, started by Germans. Germans and English in this area, as well as some Irish. Again, another tree trunk, died 1888. Can't really make out Thias, it looks like. Matthias, I think it is. 1888, and Margaret. Margrethe, his wife, died 1913 at the age of 71. And it looks like there's an added stone here that does not have an inscription, but could have. I don't know if that was reserved for their children and they decided not to use that. But another beautiful uh, woodsman of America tree trunk. This one says, Hattie, wife of, it's hard to tell, 1840-1887. And uh, she's got the only inscription on there. I'm surprised the husband's not on there, unless he... If he survived her, he may have remarried and uh, was buried with his new wife. Okay, we've got a mausoleum. And you know how much I like mausoleums, so let's go check this out. Haas is the name. does have a flag draped over the entrance of it, which is interesting to say the least. It does have a wood door here, which is interesting as well. The iron gate, 
There's no date on this, however. The only mausoleum in this cemetery as well, which makes it all that more interesting. And the door is closed by a bolt that somebody had put in there. And that's that's an old bolt too, because that's that's a square head bolt, which you don't see those anymore. So that's been there a long time. As we walk around it, it's a substantial building. I mean, there's got to be an entire family in there because that's a good, I would say, 20 feet deep and at least 10, maybe 15 feet wide. And it has a flat roof, which is interesting for something of that time period, because usually you would see a, a sloped roof. Because that way when it does rain, that rain would run right off, but we do see, we do see a drain here from that flat roof. But no windows or anything in this mausoleum, which I do find interesting. Nice building though. Nice structure. I'm guessing that from the construction of it, I'm guessing 1920s, especially with that square bolt that's been in there a while. Uh, I would say 1920s on this. Could be wrong, but very interesting mausoleum. Okay, since it is about that time of year where Major League Baseball starts their spring training, I thought it would be appropriate to do a video on Lou Boudreau. Many people know Lou Boudreau as the voice of the Chicago Cubs for many years, but Lou Boudreau really was remarkable. He was born July 17, 1917 in Harvey, Illinois. He went to Thornton High School and he played basketball and baseball for Thornton High School. As a matter of fact, in 1933, he led the Flying Clouds basketball team to a state championship and he was a three-time All-Stater. While attending the University of Illinois in 1937, he led both the basketball and baseball teams to championships. And he was one of only three students at the University of Illinois that have had their numbers retired. So Lou went on to play baseball for the Cleveland Indians and he was a shortstop for the Cleveland Indians for 13 years from 1938 to 1950. He then went to Boston, he was player manager for Boston for two years, 1951-1952. Lou was an eight-time All-Star. He was MVP in 1948. That is the same year that the Cleveland Indians won a World Series. Lou then managed to go on and manage the Kansas City Athletics from 55 to 57. After he stopped playing, he did play-by-play -play announcing for the Chicago Cubs in 58 and 59. Then he managed the team in 1960. And then he went back to announcing for the Cubs from 1961 to 1987. Here we are approaching the Boudreaux grave. He also announced for the Chicago Bulls in 1966 to 68. And here we have Lou Boudreaux's grave. He was elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1970, where he received 77% of the vote. 
the great all-star and Hall of Famer Lou Boudreau, buried here, Pleasant Hill Cemetery in Frankfurt, Illinois. It was a nice sunny day, but a brisk February day here in Frankfurt, Illinois. And we can see there in the distance, they are having a funeral today. As we see the blue tent in the distance. I have not seen the funeral pr procession pull in yet. I do want to look at this beautiful monument. The finial still stands proud atop of this monument. It has the four columns and the four archways. The name is Eisenbrandt, very German. And although I can't read the writing, because of age, I see 1885, and it is in German. And here we have, well, we can just read it on here. Uh, Christian Eisenbrandt, 1858 to 1902. And here's Henry Eisenbrandt, 1829 to 1855. And here's Christian here. And yeah, it just seems like this is for Christian and Henry. Oh, we do have one more here. Dorothea, I believe is the name, 1912. And yeah, and here's Dorothea's stone here, 1839-1912, and then Mary, this must be Henry's wife, 1860 to 1950, so Mary was 89 and 90 years old. Got several monuments here I want to take a look at again. We have the finial on top. A lot of these old monuments you see the finial has fallen. But I haven't seen that in a cemetery which is really nice. Very worn. Very worn on that. I cannot read the name very well. It's in a shadow. And again, I didn't bring my flashlight with me this time, which makes it difficult. You know, that should be, should be camera, flashlight, mandatory for all cemetery explorations. And I don't know why. I mean, it's in my bag. It's in the same bag as my camera and audio equipment. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I get too excited to get out here to start investigating and I just leave it in the car. And my car's parked way down there. You might see that white car way over there. So I'm not about to go walk over there and get it. Although I probably should. 1910 on that one. Let's take a walk up here. I see a beautiful stone I want to check out. Falkers is the name. Somebody has placed some fake flowers here. Federica Sophia, wife of Frank Falkers, born 1866, died 1891. What a beautiful stone. And up here you see what appears to be a squirrel. 
eating an acorn. That's really neat. And we have some logs down here. And here's little Elva, daughter of the Falkers. 1899, 1899. And here we have Judy, Judy, Julie, daughter of the Falkers, 1870, 1871. So they lost two children. And we have Johnson Falker, died what looks like it's hard to tell that one. 1903. Sophia. 1911. What a beautiful monument to them. It's just wonderful. I love these old pioneer cemeteries. And this cemetery in particular because it's one of those cemeteries where you can just it hasn't changed much. I mean, it's gotten bigger and it's still active, but I mean, there isn't an expressway next to it. I mean, there's some houses around it, but it still has that quaintness that you can imagine it had back in 1830, you know, when it was started. Uh, if you like this video, please give me the thumbs up. If you like my content, please feel free to subscribe. And thank you once again for coming along with me. And as always, until next time, keep exploring.